This is Tony from New York and today I'm going to show you how I made my water storage bins. What I do with these bins is I put them up on a shelf and the important part about this bin is creating a way for the water to exit which is waterproof. Basically you can supply the tank with um, RO water uh, or if you want you could use it to age your water and then drain it into the tank. So. Uh, this is actually a Sterilite container. Sterilite is great because um, all their products are food safe. What I did with this is um, I filled it up with water a gallon at a time and then grated it on the side up to four gallons. It will in theory hold five but it actually ends up not to work because um, of the location of your float valve only allows for a total of four gallons. For this project you will indeed need a float valve like this so that when you feed water into the container uh, the water will stop when the valve begins to float. This one was acquired from Bulk Reef Supply so if you get the same kind that I did um, your measurements will be similar. If you're lucky, you'll be able to get something like this. This is a uh, kangaroo safety screw spike kit. Um, this one's uh, number 924. And uh, as it turns out, um, what I've gotten here that's useful is medical grade stuff, by the way. Um, you get some of this airline tubing. Uh, well, actually, it's not really airline tubing, right? It's for carrying fluids. But it also comes with this little piece here which can be used to regulate the flow. Uh, by using one of these um, and cranking it down to a trickle it can actually take 24 hours to feed the liquid from your four gallon container into your aquarium. So if you want a drip system like I do this is fantastic. Drip system has the advantage that you don't really have to heat this water in here. It's being added to the aquarium so slowly that uh, you just never have to worry about heating it. Uh, again, this tubing is thinner than your standard airline tubing. Could you use airline tubing? Yes, you could. Your measurements will be, in that case, different than mine. Uh, but you could do it. And uh, I guess you just have to uh, clamp off the line when you're not using it. Uh, I can accomplish it using this, but you may have an alternate kind of a clip that you could use to close the line uh, when you're not ready. Um, to uh, exhaust water from the container yet. You're going to want to get some of the uh, GE clear silicone. Make sure you get silicone one. Silicone one has no fungicides or anything weird in it um, so it will not be bad for fish. Uh, this is basically the same thing as the aquarium sealant that you can get at the pet shop which by the way I guess you could get aquarium sealant at the pet shop. Costs a lot more though. Uh, but get yourself one of these and make sure you have a caulk gun. Um, that'll be really helpful uh, for this job. Additionally, you're going to need an electric drill, such as this uh, basic Black & Decker drill that I have. Um, I'm going to be using a 5 30 seconds drill bit. Uh, in order to drill the hole for the tubing to go through, if you're using a different size tubing, you'll have to experiment first to see what gives the most snug fit. Uh, perhaps you can drill through the top since um, if you get a Sterilite container like mine, it comes with a really helpful handy top. So you can test on that if you need to. Um, additionally, I've got a half an inch spade bit. and. Uh, for uh, drilling the guide hole for the spade bit, I'll, uh, I'll probably use this 7 64 inch uh, standard drill bit. If you want to get water um, into your Sterilite container, you might, for example, have a diverter on your faucet, like the kind that I have here. Uh, this position is for regular use, but I can turn it in order to feed water through my tube. Um, so that tube could, for example, uh, go straight to your Sterilite container to fill it uh, and it would shut off of course when the uh, float valve uh, floats in the water. Uh, in my case I've got it going to my RO unit which uh, in and of itself feeds the container. Um, the exact kind of tubing that you're going to need it would come with the RO unit but if you're buying it yourself 
Uh, here's an example of tubing that would be an exact fit. Uh, the polyethylene tubing, a quarter inch outer diameter. Um, this is lead free of course and uh, so this is the exact size that will work for you if you need to buy your own tubing. I like being able to put my tube right down in the back corner of my container. Uh, this is actually a low point of the container so water will naturally run to that spot. Okay, let's drill it. Clear, clean, and easy. Again, that was the 5 30 seconds drill bit required for uh, the kind of medical grade tubing that we're using. Okay, time for the guide hole. This one's going to be done with the uh, 7 64th drill bit, and uh, after that, the half inch spade bit. So I'm going to put the, uh, the hole. Uh, you, you don't want to put it on either side so much. It's got to be close to the middle uh, because when you're done, there needs to be not only enough t enough space um, for the hole, but also enough space for the float valve. There you go. And uh, if you put your guide hole in an appropriate place, uh, then your half inch uh, spade bit hole uh, will be in the perfect spot also. Uh, putting it close enough to the top so that the entire gasket can fit around this uh, this should give about four gallons of the capacity of this container. While I was at it, I put a 5 8 inch hole into the top of the container. Uh, that is so that I can feed an air stone and airline tubing down into the container later in order to circulate the water. Um, probably a good upgrade to also do later would be to put a second hole in the top so that I could drop a funnel in there. The funnel would be nice for adding salt. Um, you might not need to do it if you're only doing a freshwater storage container. Cut yourself an appropriate length of this metal, uh, medical grade tubing um, or whatever kind of tubing you're going to use. Um, you, it's probably better to cut a little longer than you need and you can always adjust it later after your box is done because we're going to silicone this into the bottom of the box and make it tight. Uh, once it's in there, you're really going to want to keep it in there. Although it's possible to remove it later, you're not really going to want to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length of this uh, strip styrene that I acquired at a craft store. This is um, 3 30 seconds of an inch tubing. And I, uh, I found it extremely useful for this purpose because what you could do is you can jam it into the tube here. It absolutely fills the tube. This will actually stop silicone from going in while you're in the middle of uh, feeding it into your container. Just like that. Alright, time to put some silicone in there. What I like to do with the silicone is cut it with this uh, standard rug cutter. It has a razor blade in it. Safety first, of course, so please be careful. I like to cut it at a 45 degree angle. It really helps me when I'm putting in the silicone. Just like that. Now it's not ready to go yet. We actually have to puncture the uh, foil that's on the inside. And uh, as you may know, your silicone gun has the right tool for the job. Right on the bottom. So puncture that tube and feed it right into your silicone gun. So Basically a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to put a glob of silicone on the bottom of the container. I'm going to force the medical grade uh, tubing through it. In addition to that, you'll notice at the bottom of this container, I've got kind of this groove going all the way along the inside bottom. And water's never going to drain out of that. So because water's never going to drain out, I'm going to fill that up with silicone. And uh, that means there will be less standing water in the container. You almost want to push the bead of silicone ahead of the tube. It gives you more control and lets you s 
uh, smooth it out as you go. There you go, all around the inside edge. You could smooth it down with your finger if you like. Uh, probably best to wear gloves for that. And I'm going to put a spot on the bottom and put my tubing through. Got this spot of silicone on the bottom, so I take my tube and I just kind of gently push it in, finding the hole I drilled earlier, just wiggling it gently as I can until it finally goes through. When this dries, should be a nice strong seal. Ah, and there we go. It's plugged right into the bottom. The uh, silicone has been smoothed around the tube uh, on the inside of the container. Um, it is likewise smoothed all the way around the tube. You can take this little plastic piece here uh, that we used to uh, keep the end of the tube clear and you can kind of wiggle it out little by little uh, over time as the silicone is drying. So that way, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of hours from now you'll have pulled it out entirely and the silicone can be allowed to dry properly without this tube ultimately being stuck in the hole. When you're done, just drive a long screw into the uh, nozzle and uh, that'll keep your uh, silicone fresh for a long time. You may wonder uh, what to do with these hoses once you're done with your drainage bins. And what I did is I just took a little length of PVC pipe and uh, drilled a hole to the uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch uh, size and I can put my uh, uh, hose right into this. Um, now this comes out if I want, I won't do it now, but it pops right out. Um, of course, uh, depending on where you're delivering your water to, you may have a different solution. Um, you don't necessarily have a water delivery pipe like I do. Perhaps you'll deliver it instead straight into the tank. Um, I think the important thing um, is to have your container mounted higher than uh, the tank because then this way you can take advantage of gravity to move the water from your water, water drainage bin uh, down into your aquarium. Uh, save some money. Why pay electric for it? Um, at least for me, the water pressure will deliver the water straight up into the storage bin, um, so in this case no electricity is needed at all, just water pressure and gravity. Just uh, an example of the finished bin with the um, float valve positioned correctly in the side of the bin. In this case I think we're going to remove these handles later because they're really not going to serve a purpose for me. Uh, the top will fit flush and easily with the uh, top of the container, but I'll have no need to clip it shut. Having the top on is a good idea to prevent evaporation. I've also noticed that some of these containers bow a little on the bottom, so what I did is I added just a little bit of thickness to the bottom like this, so that uh, when it fills with water, it will not bow so much. And this is helpful because uh, any water left in here, um, you know, it's not really going to your tank. It's just sitting in a puddle in the bottom. So uh, this kind of helps to alleviate that uh, problem. Okay, got my containers done. In my case, I have three of them. Uh, so I could use one for uh, RO water and a couple for salt water. You really want to let the silicone dry. Uh, for uh, for quite a while before you expose it to water. Uh, in this case, I'm going to wait a full 48 hours uh, before I give this a try. Filling them up for the water test now. Probably want to let them sit with water for about 24 hours or so before you consider them watertight. Uh, I do have to admit that the silicone doesn't stick super well to this particular material. So uh, do treat them with great care, and um, if you do, the seal should hold. If you move them around a lot or you are rough with them, you may break the seal. Uh, it's easy to repair uh, since the silicone just peels right off. 
but uh, of course then you've got to dry the containers over a period of time before you can reseal them. So once they're in place, just uh, uh, don't bother to move them and uh, you should do okay. So it seems like whatever kind of air stone you use, when you put it into your water, water storage bin, it's going to float unless you weight it down. I tried these heavier air stones, but these floated too. Um, what I figured out is uh, I could take a very long piece of PVC pipe, which I know is aquarium safe because I used it for all the piping in my fish room, and I uh, cut it uh, using my PC1375 uh, PVC cutter. Um, so if you happen to have some PVC pipe or you can get a hold of some, it's super cheap, uh, use this to weight down uh, your air stone. There you go, that's the idea. It's got to be a really long piece of PVC pipe uh, or else it'll kind of float anyway. Um, last stop, I just took a funnel and uh, stuck it here at the top. Um, so this way I can easily add salt anytime I want. Um, you may not need this if uh, this is for freshwater storage. Tony from New York, signing off.